Well, one of San Francisco's best-known restaurants is celebrating a rare settlement against an insurance company. The owners of John's Grill say Hartford Insurance has agreed to pay them for the losses related to the pandemic closure. The three justices who, who were hearing our case uh, had a lot of very thoughtful questions. The insurance company settled, although Constant won't say for exactly how much. He does say it's more than enough to pay his employees for the eight months of lost wages and their expenses. A California school district is suing some of the biggest players in the social media world for what they say is their role in the mental health crisis affecting young people. Anne-Marie Murphy, what is the case that you are making? And also, again, why not Instagram? <laughs> Sure. Well, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure we will be adding parties, including the Facebook entities in the near term. Um, but the suit is currently against YouTube, TikTok and Snap, and it's brought by the San Mateo County Board of Education and Superintendent McGee. 82 year old San Mateo County woman has filed a lawsuit against the private ambulance company AMR. Investigators say a former paramedic sexually assaulted the woman as she was strapped down in the back of the ambulance on the way to the hospital. This was back in December. Miguel Oniveros was arrested and charged in the assault last month. Lawyers for the victim say AMR did not do enough to protect the victim. She's in the back of an ambulance with a predator, a sexual predator, who I understand weighs over 250 pounds and stands six There's feet tall. Grace and Greg Ammon died in a car crash after leaving a family dinner. Their twin seven-year-old daughters survived the accident, and now their lives are immensely changed. The crash in November of 2002 happened on El Camino in Redwood City. The attorneys for the family have now filed a wrongful death lawsuit. They claim this is the result of dangerous street racing. Because this is a situation where people chose getting thrills over the safety of others. Yeah. The wrong well, this folks. could be a big deal. A well-known Bay Area law firm is suing Tesla for misleading the public when it comes to its autopilot and driverless features. The law firm, Kachet, Petrie and McCarthy, say since 2016, Tesla has been promising in ads like this one, its cars have the capability to drive themselves. Their great quote in their advertising material is, quote, I'm going to read this, the person in the driver's seat is only there for legal reasons. He is he is not driving anything. The car is driving itself. The neighbors affected by a deadly home explosion and fire are suing the home's property owners. They say property owners created conditions that led to that fire. The neighbors say the owners knew their tenant had large tanks of chemicals to fuel a hash oil laboratory in the basement, but they did nothing to stop it. The kind of activity here is is egregious. Uh, these these types of drug labs are incredibly, incredibly dangerous. Um, the the landlords, had, we believe, had, had a duty um, to, to our clients to at least be aware of what was going on and take affirmative steps to stop that from happening. Elon Musk wants out, and now Twitter shareholders are lawyering up. This could get ugly. Musk wants out of his proposed $44 billion deal to buy the San Francisco company. Twitter sent its own letter to Musk and his lawyers and saying in part, quote, Twitter has breached none of its obligations under the agreement. Now, to complicate things even more, several Twitter shareholders say they're going to sue Twitter and Elon Musk if this deal falls through. With us tonight, one of the lawyers representing Twitter shareholders, Anne-Marie Murphy, a partner at the law firm Kachet, Petrie & McCarthy. Anne-Marie, thanks for joining us. Thanks for your time. Uh, you are battling, as you well know, the world's richest man. What are your chances here? I think our chances are good um, because we're on the side of right. Um, Elon Musk entered into a contract. He agreed to purchase the shares, and now he's backing out. People and of God, I present to you your new bishop, the Reverend Dr. Megan Rohr. The first openly transgender bishop only served the Evangelical Lutheran Church in that role for a year. Megan Rohrer resigned. He was accused of racism after firing a lower-ranking reverend. The Sierra Pacific Synod of the Church has not commented, but Rohrer's attorney says the harassment claim is on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity. It is outrageous in this day and age that someone as incredible and devoted 
as Reverend Rohrer would be treated as egregiously as the church has treated him. Miren, residentes de una torre de apartamentos de lujo que se inundó en San Francisco hace ya cuatro meses están demandando ahora a los administradores. Alegan que ha habido mala gestión, mm. engaños, y aunado a eso, desde entonces viven con una incertidumbre porque no han podido volver a sus apartamentos. Aseguran que no han recibido el apoyo suficiente y este lunes más de 50 inquilinos demandaron a la compañía administradora. Alegan que esta, de nombre Heinz, violó la ley al no dar mantenimiento adecuado al edificio y reparar oportunamente las fugas. Un problema que además aseguran no era nuevo ni desconocido. De, desde que ab, abrió este edificio hace unos años han habido varios problemas. Through their civil lawsuit filed this week, Trudy Maxwell's family wants to send a message to both Atria Senior Living, which admits its San Mateo staff accidentally served their mother and two other residents industrial detergent thinking it was fruit juice, and a message to the senior care industry in which they believe more residents are at risk. One of the problems uh, with the state is that they are incredibly slow to react to anything. Neil McCarthy is the family's attorney on the case, which alleges inadequate staffing and training at Atria. While the DA and the company investigate the August 27th poisoning, McCarthy has concerns with the State Department overseeing the industry. No reason... Uh, that the state, who is funded with our taxpayer dollars, wouldn't come and drop the hammer on this company now and demand immediate policy changes today. All right, well, Cal Fire is investigating whether downed power lines sparked the fires, among other possible causes. The investigation is in its very early stages, and there are many possibilities, but PG&E has been fined before for lack of maintenance on trees near its lines that caused a deadly wildfire. Yeah, I-team reporter Dan Noyes is here now with some uh, fresh perspective on all this, Dan. Well, Dan and Kristen, right off the bat, I want to acknowledge all those PG&E line workers who do a dangerous job to keep the lights on, but some of them are telling me they believe that high winds, power lines, and overgrown trees were a deadly combination. Just as the fires were igniting across Napa and Sonoma Sunday night, power lines on Myers Drive in Santa Rosa were failing. PG&E sent the I-Team a statement that reads in part, these destructive winds along with millions of trees weakened by years of drought and recent renewed vegetation growth from winter storms all contributed to some trees, branches and debris impacting our electric lines across the North Bay. When they say weakened trees, that's the very responsibility they have to identify a weakened tree and to remove it before it strikes a power line. Frank Peters.